Welcome to Elementary by Ticket Tape. This is Ujwal and in this episode we'll talk about profitability ratios. So you have invested in a company or are thinking of doing it. It's great. Along with valuation and price analysis, a very important aspect of understanding a company's performance is to do with profitability. In simple terms, this is an analysis of how efficient a company is in generating return from its capital or to understand the efficiency in converting revenue to profits. Let's break profitability analysis into two major chunks: margin ratios and return ratios. Let's list down the metrics that we'll look at in each topic. In margin ratios, we have EBITDA margin, net profit margin, free cash flow margin, and other margin ratios. In return ratios, we have return on assets, return on equity, and return on capital employed. Don't worry if these terms sound unfamiliar. We'll cover each of these ratios, and by the end of this video, you'll be analyzing your way to glory in no time let's start with margin ratios first to understand this let's begin with something called the top line in an income statement the total revenue in a company's numbers this is the top of the funnel this number represents the cash that came into the company in the year from its business activities it's also called the gross income or revenue from sales many names but one concept money that came in In accounting for the company's income statement there are different types of expenses that the company has to bear. Let's quickly head over to TCS financial statements to have a look. To see the expenses click on see costs at the bottom. The rows highlighted in red are the costs. The line item called EBITDA means earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. A lot of words here but to keep it simple EBITDA measures earnings before the influence of accounting, tax, and financial deductions. EBITDA margin is simply the ratio of EBITDA to the total revenue. With an EBITDA of forty-six thousand seven hundred one crore and a total revenue of one lakh sixty-one thousand and five forty-one crores in twenty twenty, the EBITDA margin for TCS is twenty-eight point nine one percent. It means that out of hundred rupees that Reliance generates as revenue, twenty-eight point nine one rupees is converted. to a beta moving down the funnel we'll subtract other items like interest and taxes and we arrive at the net income which is the final profit or loss number of the company to calculate net profit margin we just divide this number by total revenue which gives us 20.02% let's move to screener to compare tcs versus other companies adding a beta and net profit margins as filters and restricting the sector to it services and consulting we see how the margins vary across different companies This is due to the different ways in which each company is run and gives an insight into the efficiency of the company. This gives us a starting point to analyze what one company is doing better or worse than other in terms of efficiency. To check historical margin numbers, I've added the 5 years average net profit margin and 5 years average EBITDA margin as filters as well. You'd have noticed that for larger mature companies, the 5 year average and latest margin numbers are more or less in line. While for smaller companies the individual numbers tend to have a higher change on a year on year basis margin ratios can be calculated for any metric let's take an example of free cash flow it represents the cash that is available to shareholders after all cash outflows have been accounted for this is basically trying to estimate the same thing like net profit is but instead of being an accounting metric it's a real cash metric net income might have accounting deductions like depreciation which will not be deducted in the case of free cash flow to calculate free cash flow margin we'll just divide it by total revenue and create a custom filter for this comparing net profit margin and fcf margin can give us good insights about the level of accounting deductions being used to calculate the net income for different companies for example there might be companies where the net profit margin is positive but free cash flow is negative are they recognizing revenue from previous years in this year and that's why net profit ended up being positive many such questions can be formed while looking at these ratios let's create another margin ratio say the employee cost margin now this is not a standard metric i just made it up to understand what portion of revenue is going to employee cost and for tcs this number comes out to be 53.21% we can do this for any item like raw materials interest to understand what portion of the money is going where now let's move to return ratios In margin ratios we use total revenue as a denominator in return ratios we'll use net profit as the numerator the objective is to understand what fraction of other metrics gets converted to profit 
First up is return on assets. The formula is simple, net profit divided by total assets. Total assets includes cash or cash equivalents, inventory, receivables. This is the amount that is to be received by the company from its partners. Fixed assets like factories, offices, etc. Return on assets tells us how efficiently a company is employing these assets to convert into profit for its shareholders. These assets are used to drive sales which increases the total revenue and which eventually trickles down into net income. Just as a point here, generally the denominator number is taken as the average assets number during the year. This is approximated by taking an average of start of the year and the end of the year total assets number. Next return ratio is return on equity. Formula is net income by average total equity. This measures how well a company is converting the money put in by equity investors into profit. Let's go to screener now and apply the return on equity filter. Given that different sectors have different ways of working, we'll restrict our discussion to one particular sector, IT services and consulting. You see how the ROE numbers vary a lot between the companies. Many small companies have very high ROE because of the denominator effect. They have very small equity. So let's for now just look at large cap companies. Even here, you can see that TCS has an ROE of 37% while it's 17% for Wipro. TCS is leading the industry in using its equity capital to drive profits. Adding the return on assets ratio and debt to equity ratio, we see that TCS is leading from an ROA perspective as well versus its peers. And its debt to equity ratio of 0.0815 or 8.15% is also amongst the lowest in the sector. From this superficial view, one could say that TCS could probably further lower its debt level given it has the necessary headroom in profit being generated from equity alone. Now that we have reached till here, let's discuss one more metric, the ROCE or the return on capital employed. The numerator for ROCE is not net income, it's the operating income or also called EBIT or PBIT, profit before interest and taxes. The denominator capital employed is calculated as total assets minus total current liabilities. So the basic relationship between assets, liabilities and equity is A equal to L plus E. And liabilities can be broken down into short-term or current liabilities and long-term or non-current liabilities. Assets minus current liabilities gives us long-term liabilities plus equity. Basically, company building long-term capital. ROCE metric is really helpful in evaluating companies in sectors with high capital requirements like utilities, telecom and real estate. Changing our sector to real estate, we can see that ROE for DLF and embassy office parks are comparable at around 3.5%. But ROCE paints a completely different picture. Let's add long-term debt to equity filter as well. We covered debt to equity ratio in an earlier elementary video. Click the card above to watch it or click the link in the description. Embassy's ROE is inflated due to high usage of long-term debt. ROCE includes long-term debt in the denominator as well and hence paints a better picture on how well the company is using its overall building capital. That's all on profitability ratios. I think we covered a lot of ground in this video. Please put in comments which profitability metric you prefer the most and why. And for more such simple explanations, subscribe to our channel. Keep it simple.